Um, we are going to, I'm going to find my notes, sorry. <laughs> I'm delighted to uh, invite to the stage um, two of the companies that are really kind of rocking it at the moment in the esports space um, in the form of Super Evil Megacorp, uh, the publisher of Vainglory and the leading streaming network, uh, Twitch. Um, uh, so to discuss their views of the market and what the, the projects they're working on together, I'd like to welcome Ryan Chapley and Heine Vassander. Give them a round of applause, let them one walking up. <laughs> Lovely. Come and sit yourselves down. <sighs> How are you doing today? You good? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me okay, Mum? I'm, I'm, very, I'm very quiet. You can probably hear me anyway. Hello. So, hello. Hello. I understand we have some video to show. We do. We have so a quick video. We have a quick video. How is the video going? Do I need to pad or are we going to go for it? <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay. So hopefully, run VT. We good? Oh, look at that. Championships. It was actually the that is the wrong video, but that's okay. We can watch this one. <laughs> I like these videos. <laughs> There's another video. There's another video. This one is actually an interview with one of our youngest players in Europe. He's 13, Mr. K. Cool. Um, but I have a probably a bit more interesting of a video which recaps 2015, kind of that what, be, what, 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 what we, we did in 2015 in, in esports. I think that's going to be. Is that one? This one, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's this thing oh. running in the back. What's going there. on here? <laughs> Do you want to stop and start that again? Is that okay? Sorry about this technical. Uh, yeah, because you've kind of, it's not full screen at the moment, right? Like, should we maybe delete one of those videos? <laughs> Oh. So many videos. And this is one of the problems with esports. <laughs> the, the technical, the technical situation is very different. So this production is, this is, is important. This is not what Twitch does, obviously. Uh, this okay. is <laughs> so we just uh, heard some stuff about production value here. This yeah. is good. So, okay, were you able to go back to the start and play that one from the start, guys? Yep. Yep. Okay. At least we get really nice close-ups. Yeah, yeah. So you just need to drag that slider back, I guess. We can play it in the window if it's proving a problem. Otherwise, it might be the format size is slightly different. Just need the audio and we're good. There we go. There we go. Second time lucky, that's fine. Welcome everyone to the eSports Arena here in Santana for the 2015 Big Boy Autumn Season Live Final! I love Kristen. <laughs> <It's like Familiar face there. That's good. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's very team. impressive. <laughs> that's why. That's, you've kind of you've you've, you've got that's some of my questions already gone. But no, that was very very impressive. I think that was really really cool. And um, I guess straight away that, that that shows the the intensity and the importance and the yeah just the engagement of of, uh, of esports right now, especially what, what what you guys are doing. So you, you had some kind of um, some figures flashed in there. Like, could you kind of recap a little bit on on what you guys have done? Because it was quite quick. For sure. Yeah, it was really quick. Um, <laughs> Um, 2015 was a very big year. I mean, we kind of started our esports with the autumn season. That was the first event, kind of bigger event that we organized by ourselves. Prior to that, we um, we've partnered together with OGN in in Korea, so we've run VIPL together with them. But kind okay, of 2015, it really escalated very quickly, considering that pretty much a year ago we didn't even have a spectator client in the game. And <laughs> honestly, the community came to us like, "Hey, we want to organize tournaments. We want to do all this competitive stuff and watch your game and stream your game." And so we had to build a spectator client. It was literally from 
the first PAX of the year to the second PAX, we had built a quick spectator mode wow. and ran a first tournament at PAX at Twitch's booth. And that's kind of where it all got started. Um, and so during last year, we gave out $350,000 in prize pool total. Um, oh gosh, if wow. I remember correctly, it was 155 million minutes watched on Twitch of Vainglory esports content. Um, our, our weekend, because we run our season, so we, like every year, I mean, it goes like winter, summer, fall, and, and so forth. At the end of every season, we have um, the North American European Championships. So one of the weekends, um, it's 1.5 million unique viewers tuned in. So on, on one of those weekends, so it's it's pretty impressive kind of growth very quickly. Um, and like the video said, we just got started. I mean, this, right now we're in our third season running that together with Twitch. We just kicked off summer, so we're very excited um, for stuff that's going on. That, I mean, that's that's impressive. I mean, like you know, aside from the size of money, the, the engagement there, 155 million. Uh, sort of minutes of watch yeah. and, and 1.5. That's just that's incredible engagement. I don't know, like where I, I'm sure we'll talk about this a bit later. But in, in comparison to kind of to, to regular sports, I think I read saw some saw some sta stats to show that already esports tournaments are already up there with everything but you know, like the World Cup and maybe the NFL Super Bowl. Is that is that right? Uh, well, I think the one of the most interesting pieces when when you come to esports is just kind of what people do when they go and watch it. And you see this in the chat sometimes, like, oh, I've been watching this for nine hours today. Like, people get extremely invested in the programs. They don't go watch one game on Sunday. They go and watch the entire weekend's worth of programming. So uh, kind of we, we have to look at how does this... Um, kind of the, this minutes watch number in particular, uh, as we see it continue and growing, how are people doing it? How long are they watching these streams for? And how, how are they engaging with the brands? And obviously, yeah. So we segued quite. quite I'm going to skip between the two of you, and I'm going to get all of my questions. So, so obviously, uh, you guys are seeing all the data. I mean, you're both seeing all that. But that's you, what you're, you're the experts in, in, in streaming. You've, you yourself have had pretty meteoric, pretty rise in the last couple of years, um, up until kind of acquisition, I guess, beyond. But your, your name previously was in. Uh, uh, or has been in PC based mm -hmm. gaming pr primarily from, from what I've seen and what we're involved. I mean, do, you, why move into mobile now from a Twitch perspective? Well, um, mobile is, is kind of on this, this cusp for, for a lot of the, the esports scene of, well, we see what our, our viewers are going and watching yeah. on in terms of devices, what they're watching on. Um, and then we're really hitting the point when titles like Vanglory are coming in and, and presenting experiences that, uh, from a competitive perspective, really match what we've grown up with or what we come to expect from a, a PC sports scene. So I think one of the biggest pieces that you see people's eyes when they're playing it at PAX, that it lights up. They go and they play the game and coming in, they hear, oh, it's a mobile on touch. They have preconceptions. Yeah. And then they play it and they're like, holy smokes, this is like, has everything here that a competitive MOBA has. Yeah. It runs beautifully, it looks gorgeous, and, and you can play it anywhere. Yeah. Okay, and, and and have you got any? Is there any kind? Of, uh, we've talked about 155 kind of minutes. Is there mm -hmm. any kind of any broad numbers or, or stats that you can share about how how much of mobile? content is being consumed in comparison to other content on, on Twitch? Uh, well, what I can say is that mobile is definitely one of our um, you know, very dedicated fan bases for yeah. where people watch it, just the number of devices. Uh, we have, um, what, 70 some billion minutes watched on, on mobile devices across uh, 64 million unique users. Wow. So um, that I think we'll, we'll expect to see continue growing dramatically over time here. Um, and then, you know, for for Vanglory, we've been seeing some pretty significant growth over over the past season since they've started doing the esports scenes. Yeah. Um, and percent wise, um, I think our, our recent mobile viewership percentage is is about thirty eight percent of our our traffic okay. wise. So it's it's pretty significant. Uh, for any developers who obviously are are creating mobile titles, uh, when you're thinking about the viewership perspective, though, you know, obviously a lot of people are going to be viewing the devices that they're using. Yeah. So for titles like Vanglory, it, it is definitely higher. So just a bit of a love in uh, kind of early doors in this. So, so you guys have obviously kind of come together. What, what is it that kind of led to that? You just saw, my God, look at the engagement with this. We've got to talk to these guys. Or what was it, what was it that kind of led you to come together in the first place? And maybe you can talk a little bit about what it is you're actually doing. I don't know. Does everybody know about the, the deal between 
No, it's very, very quiet. They're very hungover, most of the best. <laughs> so, um, so maybe you can talk a little bit about the, the nature of the deal and how you kind of got together. Sure. So I can kind of start and Ryan can chime in. So the current status of affairs, so to say, is um, <laughs> we've ent entered a three-year partnership together with Twitch where we run our esports program together, um, sharing costs, sharing um, profits, and really Ryan and I work day-to-day -to -day together all the time anyway. Um, so, so we're really kind of growing the scene together. From our end, what it really came down to is that we're a game developer. Um, we'd love to be an esports production company, but in the end, we need to focus on building the game and making sure our players want to continue to play that competitively. And esports is so much fun. You can put so much time and energy into it. I see. Yeah. Cosplay also. <laughs> all, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know all the things, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, where was I? So yeah, as a game developer, it's also very important to keep focus on what you're actually probably better at, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which in our case is building building Vainglory. Um, so we wanted to find a partner that can really help us grow the scene um, in a sustainable way, because it, it was really down to like you know either we go out and, and hire ten people and figure out how to esports our own, or we actually partner together with someone who's already very savvy, who knows um, what to do and how to grow the scene. And then Twitch was a very natural partner for us, um, also from the viewpoint that community is very important for us. We're yeah. always saying that you can't build an eSport. Your community has to tell you when you're ready to be an eSport. Like, you have to build a great game and let them tell you. Yeah. And Twitch, I think, is very similar in how community is, is really what Twitch is all about. Yeah. Um, so it was, we kind of share that vision as well, which, which is, makes it great to work together. Have you got anything to add, or has she done it all? She's taken well, over. I mean, she's, she's taken most of I it. Can, I can see the nature <laughs> of the relationship day to day. I should, yeah. actually, I should actually add a bit of context around just kind of like uh, esports in general at Twitch. Um, so obviously we've been very involved from the, the broadcasting perspective. Yeah. Uh, the the esports team as a whole within Twitch is is a little bit newer compared to the overall uh, growth of the uh, of the company, um, and our our team is just very dedicated on. Um, kind of looking at the, the esports industry, the esports scene, and helping move it forward in a positive direction. Yep. Uh, most of us actually in there come from competitive backgrounds. I used to compete a long, long time ago, um, and you know. Have you retired now? Uh, I, I've I've done things. Is in it between, too so. is it too late for me? Is that what you're saying? I feel I, I, feel I might have missed my calling in well, esports. Well, you know, <laughs> considering the age of a lot of the Vanglory players, I think everyone in this room is retired okay. at this point. <laughs> um, but you no, know, in, in general, like we we wanted to focus on. Um, having that kind of the getting the esports products to the consumers sure. and, and the consumption side um, but with the background of being players ourselves where can we really improve the kind of overall flow and then sure. working with developers with amazing titles to, so, to is, is, so is this sort of deal this is your first big mobile Game related deal though, because are you, have you worked with previous other, with PC titles as well in yeah. a similar way? But so, so the esports program in general, kind of we have a, a variety of different. Everything's customized for yeah, each yeah. program. Um, this is an example of an extremely hands-on one where we work very closely with SEMC. Um, Rocket League is another example with uh, Cyanix that we work quite closely. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are other programs that we have different levels of um, kind of involvement in between running the the programs themselves to more around the the production broadcast side. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting, but this is, as I say, the mobile, this is probably the most hands-on and the is, first mobile. Yes, this is definitely our... The first, and, and how you go, the only mobile type <laughs> we're working with. So, um, I want to ask a little bit about, um, we're switching back, but a little bit about um, Vainglory. Um, you, you know, you've deliberately gone out and, and gone very hardcore for a, for a, for a mobile the mobile industry is generally has been more casual, not, not exclusively, uh, and, and obviously it's, it's very, it's very similar in some respects to a PC, to the PC mobile. So is that, I guess that was a very conscious choice before you were in eSport that you wanted to, to do a hardcore MOBA, and that's part one. And part two is, is is where does it differ? Where, what choices you have to make? With, with the mobile version. Sure, so so for the first part, um, the founders of the company and, and actually everyone who works there, we're kind of, we're people who grew up playing core games, you know, we we spent hours LAN partying with our friends or in my case, I spent way too many hours playing Diablo. Um, <laughs> um, and th those are kind of the experiences that we want to also play 
regardless what platform you're on. Yeah. And we kind of feel very strongly that, you know what, um, mobile also deserves core games. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with casual games. It's great. I love them. I play them a lot. But we also uh, felt very strongly that, you know, um, if I want to get into a deep, immersive game, I almost have to go dig out my PC or my console, go through the whole, you know, update process and, and you know, spend hours on it. Why can't I just go on my phone, open it up, and just get in there and get competitive? Go through all the iOS exactly. updates. <laughs> well, sometimes. <laughs> you need to do those. Um, and, and that's really kind of what it comes down to. At Super Evil, we really believe that you, you should be able to play those deep, immersive game experiences regardless of platform. Yeah. Um, and that's really been kind of the, the building you know, thesis for the company. And we, we stand by that. Um, and so then kind of tangenting that into your second part of the question where we kind of compare to a PC PC um, game. I mean, obviously, the clearest difference there will be the touch controls. Um, if you if you've played MOBA, as you know, it's keyboard and and um, what do you call it, the mouse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so old-fashioned technology. You've yeah. forgotten what it is already. It's fine. English is my second language. Bear with me. Um, <laughs> So, we can do this in Finnish if you prefer. Yeah, it'll, it'll I, be I don't a, know if okay. anyone will get anything out of it in Finnish, though. Um, so um, play, play, you kind of play your mobile um, using those two hands, and then shifting from that into touch controls, where you play either with your index fingers or a few fingers. It really depends on your play style. That's probably the biggest difference that yeah. you'll, you'll notice going from PC to our game. Um, and but it's it's really quick and intuitive to learn, and we have we've put so much time and hours really to get the touch controls right. Because especially if you want to build a game that, that's playable on a competitive level, the controls need to be out of the way. You can't be focusing on gaming. Said, oh shoot, what did I need to do to do this thing? You need to just be yeah. playing, right? Um, so that's that's been one clear thing, um, and then. Um, other than that, I mean, it's really a full-on MOBA. Yeah. Um, it's shorter. Uh, the typical um, session length is about 20 minutes. Um, so that's considerably shorter than most MOBAs are around 40, 45 minutes. Um, but other than that, it really has all the phases of a true MOBA, if you like. Um, it is 3v3, not 5v5, so that's also a bit different. Um, and everything has been built for the, touch, for the touch platform. So that goes from the map to hero design, like I mentioned, the controls already. We, and then also putting a lot of focus, making sure that it's, it's a competitive game in the sense that you have different <clears throat> kind of <laughs> MOBAs have a specific kind of pattern of, of how you proceed, where in the beginning you're, you're trying to get a lot of gold, you're laning, you're jungle, you're getting objectives, then you're thrown into team fights. You really need to push down the turret, get into the enemy base and eventually destroy them or they destroy you. So really making sure that all of those important phases are in there. And yeah. also, one key thing is that if you make a mistake, it can't cause you the entire game, right? You can't lose because of one single mistake. So also having that opportunity for comeback. Um, so yeah, I mean, really, it, it doesn't differ that much. <laughs> sure. So um, if you're a MOBA player, it'll be familiar. Yeah, be yeah. We have a lot of players who, who uh, still play or used to play on PC, and they've hopped into our game. And it's, it's straightforward to get into. Too. Okay, okay. Well, that's, that's good. That was, that was a long sentence. It was a really long you, sentence. You, 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 there's no breathing in that. That was good. Um, I, I, throwing a sort of different question at, at, uh, at Twitch. I, I guess in the mobile kind of streaming and video space, there's the number of competitors, as I'm sure there are in PC. We've had, you know, kind of YouTuber doing things there, kind of Mob Crusher doing things there. How would you say that kind of Twitch uh, stands out? What's your differential there? Or well, what do you do better than everyone else? Come on. <laughs> well, Let's brag we, a we, do, we do a lot of great things. Yeah, yeah you've, got, purple, you've got nice right? hoodies. That's, yeah, that's definitely... Exactly. <laughs> For staff only, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, in, in general, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of great things that Twitch does and kind of highlighted the, the community focus. Um, you know, in all the companies you've been in, there's always like, oh, you know, we have value stuff, right? And that just kind of sits there on the wall. But, but with Twitch, it's like the, the kind of broadcaster first mentality is... It's not just there as a placard. It's yeah. just ingrained in absolutely everything that we do. So we're still we're at a size where we have these abilities to create multi-million dollar partnerships with developers and, and do awesome things. But at the same time, we're also having very personal connections to all of the all the broadcasters. Um, so that's it, we're in that really nice size spot at the moment. Um, additionally, like. There's there is a community around the viewership of Twitch. Yeah. Um, so you know we have uh, a, a lot of people tuning into these streams. Uh, there the chat 
lots of new features that we keep adding into the, how we how we do chat, how we're adding to chat. Uh, you know, the the friends stuff that we just added uh, recently, and, and a lot more. I'm not stealing thunder from TwitchCon because that's coming up. Uh, just a little plug for later. Yeah. Okay. Later when, when, when's TwitchCon then? Uh, that's in late September. Fantastic. Yeah. September, I think, 30 to October. I, I heard you had like a thousand people queuing for, for hoodies last year. Uh, people do like these hoodies. I know. I'm, I, they are very nice. I'm. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We have we have all sorts of other really neat swag too, as well yeah. as the CMC does the hats in particular. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, but yeah, otherwise there's there's a lot of uh, kind of very very community focused things that that we work on as well. So you know, from compared to some of the other com competitors, if you come in and experience the uh, the the Twitch experience, you are really being involved in a different way than you could even in, even at a live event yeah. sometimes. Uh, and then uh, I would also say that for kind of Twitch's side when it comes to the broadcasters, we're we're very connected and concerned about making sure that they can have a uh, kind of a sustainable growth pattern too. Uh, so one of the things, especially when it comes to, to mobile, mobile streaming is not an easy solution yeah, at all. Yeah. It's, it's always challenging. Um, and one of the things that we found is that for, uh, for broadcasters who are turning this into a career. They're really, they're getting thousands of people tuning into all their streams. Yeah, they're yeah. just watching regularly. Um, you know, naturally, they tend to go to a higher level of production value as well. So for a console player, if they're doing that, they're going to be plugging into a PC. They're going to be doing all the, the complicated overlays. Um, and even if they started on console, that's kind of where they end up. Yeah. Uh, so when it, when it comes to the mobile stuff, you know, I think we're, we're still learning out, yeah. quite a bit and, and growing that. And one of the great things of working with SCMC is that we have the ability to do that with our eSports broadcast of saying, hey, look, this is what a, a competitive broadcast of Vainglory can look like with a quality production side. And if you didn't notice, and when it's on the front page, we have tons of people who come in and they don't notice for a little yeah, while yeah, that it's yeah. a touch game. And yeah. then they're like, holy smokes, I That's can amazing, put this on, yeah. the, on the BART or whatever. I guess, um, I, I know this is probably taking away a little bit from, 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 from SMC. I don't want to take any shot. But like, for, for, if you're a publisher out there, a mobile publisher developer, mm -hmm. yeah, how, how do you go about working with, with Twitch? I mean, clearly, you're not going to get this, this the, like, this is the top level of partnership you can <laughs> yeah. get. And, and she's not going to let anybody get close to you. So that's, that's fine. She's going to be... No, it's great no, if, she if loves more developers join. Yeah. Honestly, I'm but, but very welcoming. What's the, what's the kind of stepping stones? What's the to, 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 to start working? Working with Twitch to, to help build your game into a potential eSport, e I guess. Um, well, so I think there's a couple different kind of facets of, of working with Twitch from that perspective. Uh, for for the eSports side, we we definitely are always engaging and uh, talking with a lot of different developers. We have a, a business development team that does that regularly. Yeah. Uh, and then just for the in general kind of product integration side, uh, working with different developers to make their their games uh, in ways that really work well with the streaming platform. Yep. Um, we have an entire developer success team. And uh, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out TwitchCon is a really great way to get so in touch with all of them. So go to TwitchCon. Yeah, go, go to TwitchCon. OK. OK, no, that's, that's, that's interesting. OK, do we have a, a question? I've got kind of one final closing question. Any questions about working with Twitch or creating your game for eSports? I can't really see it. It's like a light right in my face. So. No, okay, okay. I'm gonna. Um, I guess I'm gonna let you throw it out there with one final thing. And, and in terms of, um, in terms of what lies in store for for, for you guys working together, or for the general kind of mobile esports particularly, do you have any kind of predictions or anything you think we'll see in the next year? Are you guys going to be doing? Even more. I mean, obviously, I don't want you to give all the plans, but like, is is it? You were saying it's just started. So, is this what's going to happen next? All the evil plans of world domination. Yeah, well, you are the super <laughs> evil megacorp after all. So. Um, no, so we're definitely kind of how I'd expect the scene to grow. Mobile esports, kind of, if I. Um, shift to a bit higher, higher of a level, I wouldn't be surprised to see more titles joining mobile esports. I mean, Supercell and Clash Royale are a great example. And, and they might, they're getting a small following, I believe. They yeah, might, they might a just, slight, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just like PC esports. I mean, there's space for multiple titles yeah. um, and multiple audiences. And I do think that the growth of the overall scene of the overall industry is healthy for everyone. Yeah. Um, having you know more games come in, having more people tune in and, and follow, um, have bigger sponsorships, have more more professional teams, see players actually be able to um, sustain themselves as competitive players. I, yeah. I think all of that is, is happening, and we'll see that kind of escalate further in the future. And also, um, production quality, we'll, we'll see that increase as well. OK, yeah. cool. Anything from? Yeah, I think it'll be bigger. Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely growth is kind of the biggest uh, biggest factor. We just we see the potential side of the number of uh, you know the number of competitive gamers out there is just so huge. Where we have 800 million PCs, three billion mobile devices, right? So that's kind of the the big talking point number of 
at so some one point. One of those is bigger than the other. I've, I've picked up. Yes, that. yeah. Yes. Okay. So, and and it's it's not a matter of if it is just a question of when. When and how. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, can we have a round uh, round a warm round of applause, please, for uh, for our thank you. <laughs>